Hi everybody, Simon here, Projects in the Barn, and today we're going to be doing a short video on my really dirty Land Rover Discovery 3. Um, if you cast your mind back a few months when I first got it, when I was going around the car showing you what it was all like, you'll remember that the uh, tailgate release was a little bit sticky. Um, you press the button, it wouldn't quite release it, and anyway, I sort of I cleaned it up a little bit when I first got it and got it all working so it was opened up the tailgate as it should do but the other day it actually stopped working so um, I couldn't get into my boot now having done a look through the owner's manual there is an override uh, that we can do which I'll show you in a moment um, but I've gone ahead I've bought myself a new um, tailgate release button so we can swap it all over hopefully get it working again uh, just as it should do so hopefully this will be a permanent fix um, it depends on the quality of the part I have bought an aftermarket one I've got it from Amazon it was sub 20 pounds here in the UK about um, I can't remember what it was now 18 pounds or something like, I can't remember I'll put a link in the description below from uh, where I got it from I got it from uh, Amazon I say it is a um, copy a Chinese copy but everywhere I was looking parts stores and for um, people that trade with Land Rover parts they also sell the cheaper alternative the Chinese one so how bad can it be it's only a micro switch but I'll show you the bit that we're talking about so as those that know with the Land Rovers these have a split tailgate so there's a button up underneath there where the um, number plate lights are which you put your hand up into it's a little micro switch and that releases the upper half of the tailgate so this pit opens up then there's a button for the lower part of the tailgate that you press internally and that comes down. But my problem is, <coughs> excuse me, when you put your hand up here to where the switch is and you pull on it, it does absolutely nothing at all. So I take you underneath here. Hopefully we can uh, see. I don't know if my uh, light will aid us at all, but all this black rubberized section is where the switch is. The switch is up on this part. I'm pulling up where my thumb is now. You can see I'm pulling on it. Yeah, you can't hear the switch activate at all. So it's totally gone. <sighs> totally gone kaput. So there is an override. So if I take you into the car, and it's a bit fiddly doing the override. It's all right if there's two of you. So, inside the car, you've got the um, lock and the unlock buttons, buttons, I should say. So to override or to open the tailgate internally, um, you simply press and hold down the lock and the unlock buttons at the same time. You'll hear the vehicle either lock or unlock, depending on its state. And then you'll hear the solenoid go off in the back on the tailgate to open it. So if I do that bit first, that's the doors locked. That's the tailgate popped. So if I go back out, let me just press the unlock button just in case. So if we go back outside, so we're now unlocked. But as you can see, there's not enough pressure in the tailgate struts to pull it away fully. So what we need to do is to put something up in here, a bit of pressure, uh, to keep the pressure on while we press the buttons. So I'll show you what I did. Um, I just used um, a screwdriver actually. So let me grab that and then I'll show you what I'm talking about. Right, so I've just got a flat blade screwdriver. You can use a plastic trim tool or anything like that. Um, but all I want to do is just put this up inside here. And I just want to put, there we go. There we go. So it's just a bit of pressure. So it's just pulled the tailgate ever so slightly away, but it's keeping enough pressure on it where I can't pull it or push it so if we say so it's a lot easier with two people <laughs> we go back to the front again i'm just showing you you could do this in an emergency 
where you can do it on your own. Same thing, press both buttons and hold them down. That's it popped. Hopefully it's pulled it away enough. There we go. To open my tailgate. Now we can see the switch again more closely. Now when I took it off to have a look at it originally, this rubber cover is absolutely soaking wet. And I'll remove it again for you now, see if I can do it one-handed, um, just to show you what it's like inside there. I just grabbed me a screwdriver that fell on the floor. Bear with me. Okay, so again, you can use a trim tool or just a flat blade screwdriver if you're careful. And all you need to do is just put it in on the side here and peel it away. Now my one, when I took it off last time, it's got a little clip behind the rubber on each side. So one here, one tab there, and should be one tab on that side. As you can see, mine have broken away. Uh, it's probably been out a few times, but the bit I wanna show you is inside here. So this has just got these two black wires going into the back of the micro switch and then it's all um, sealed up so you can't unplug this particular switch and there's a very interesting Ford badge can you see it next to the Land Rover one so yeah it's probably used on the Ford range cars and the micro switch lives up in this rubber cover so basically just going to peel the rubber cover away. You can see the water coming out of it already, look. So um, it just lips over. There we go, just lips over. And this was absolutely disgusting when I took it off the other day. There we go. And you can still see, just pop the uh, rubber cover down. So this is the sprung button that pushes on the switch. If we just pull that down, out the way, there we go. So you can see this little plastic part here, that pushes up against, I don't know if it'll focus or not. There's a little button in there. So this part here, let's just come out of it, pushes on the micro switch button which lives just up inside there it's the little ready brown rubbery part it pushes on that and that's what activates the solenoid and opens up the tailgate um, down here so that's what we're looking to do today is to replace this so you can buy ones which have got a whole wiring loom on which means I'll have to remove all of the tailgate trim to do it to get to the wiring loom but what a lot of the companies do now is just sell this switch with the black wires on which means I can just cut the wires here and then um, crimp together the the new button comes with a couple of crimps crimp together solder heat shrink however you want to do it the new switch on so that's what I'm going to try today so if I just pull my load cover over so we can show you exactly what my new switch looks like. I can rest it on there. There we go. So, my new switch is here. I'll just take it out. So it comes with a couple of um, crimps oh, trying to escape there you go just a couple of the uh, red crimps put them in my pocket for a minute and this is the actual new switch so there we have it so the micro switch you can hear now hopefully hear it clicking So it's got the new rubber cover over on it, 
and the little plastic tangs to secure in properly. And I'll say the uh, wires just go directly into the back of the switch and it's filled with some sort of sealant, hot glue, something like that. And I've just got the two black wires here. So the idea being, I'll say the switch goes uppermost when it gets fitted. So the idea being, I'm just going to snip the wires here, strip it back to expose the wire. Hopefully the wire's not corroded and then we'll crimp it together, see if it works. If that works, long term, I shall probably solder it together. But just for now, we'll try up the crimps just to get it working and just to show you it working. So if I get my uh, cutters a moment, we'll do that bit. So bear with me, I'll go and grab them. Right, so I've just grabbed a few tools. If I take my uh, cutters here, I just want to cut this as close as I can. Give me as much uh, wire left over. So we'll cut right down next to the switch. Like so. We just need to strip the ends of the wires back. So hopefully, if I can do all this one-handed, it'll be a miracle. Got me uh, strippers here, which are great when um, they work first time. So let me see if I can uh, get on there. I might need to call for my uh, camera assistant, as in the wife. Bear with me. <laughs> right, so Joe's come out uh, to hold the camera for me, just while I try and get in here. There's not much wire exposed, so I'll try and get in there best I can. If not, I'll probably have to use my pliers. I just need to... Um, Off, oh, sorry, strip off the uh, wire in. No, they're no good for this. So I'll use these and just carefully peel away the outer casing. Just being careful, so I don't want to cut through the wires. Right, we'll just twist them together. They don't appear corroded, the actual wiring looks in good order. And that's how you could solder this. There we go. You see those two little wires sticking out? Just there. So now what we'll do, before I crimp it, we'll test it to see if it works. We will, um, so yeah, just where it's a micro switch, I don't think it matters which way round the wires go. It's just black to black. And if I try and just twist them together for a minute, if I can. Well, there we go. So in fact, we can do it without the switch. Just by touching these two wires together, we should hear the solenoid activate. Can you hear that? So if I close the lock over, just look down here, darling. If I just close off the lock, like so, hopefully now, you just watch the lock, I'll touch the two wires together. See it open? He moved. Happy days, right. So we know the wiring's good. That's so all I want to do. I'll just take this sheath off for a moment. Just to give me a bit more room. And I'll just take a bit more of this sheathing off. There we 
go. So much easier when you've got room. I'm not stuck inside the tailgate. Oh. There we go. So if I now just touch these together, just twist them. I just want to test the switch before I make a permanent connection. There's one side and there's the other. So if I now, there we go. Can you hear that? I'll show you again. So if I lock it with my screwdriver, there we go. And I'll just, just stand back see if you can get it all in. Oops, sorry. So if I press the switch now, there we go, it's opened up. So we know the switch is good. So we can go ahead and crimp those on now. What I think I'll do is I'll start with the, um, I'll put them in the car. Try and get in here first. So it doesn't leave much room. Have like another 10 centimeters of wire on here. No, that's not worked, is it? I'll tell you what, we'll do we'll get my soldering iron out and then we'll actually solder it properly and we'll bin them. <laughs> okay, so I'm just going to solder the switch so this isn't a lesson on soldering but all we're going to do is tin the ends of these wires just like so get a bit there. put this little gas soldering iron is it's all right it's not brilliant <laughs> okay same thing we've got a bit on there we've got to these wires we'll just same thing we've done a bit on that one there not too much Like so, and then what we'll do is just cut that in half. This is the sleeve, and they come with it. I'll cut it a bit, like so. Cut that in half, and then I'll put a bit of sleeving back over there pull down over both sections and we'll put one of a piece each over each of the wires like that and then hopefully whoop, if you don't grab it by the sleeve you just put on because they're just falling on the floor <laughs> On my, on my gravel driveway. <laughs> oh, there's one. Well, there's the other. Ugh. Try that again. Hopefully, the wife caught that with her <laughs> awesome filming skills. <laughs> right, let's try that again, shall we? So now, we'll try and. Uh, So you need 800 hands. We'll try and melt. Let's 
two together. So this ain't a, uh, a lesson on soldering. You got a lesson on soldering? Don't no, watch this. <laughs> Come on. Just want to try and get the solder melted. There we go. Like that. I say once they have kind of stuck together, I'll go back over it in a minute and neaten that up. There we go. I will go back and neaten that up. But just to show you now, let's test it. There we go. Can you hear that? I can hear it. Yep. Happy days. Right. So let me neaten that up and I'll come back to you. Okay. All right then. So we've managed to tape it up best we can. It's not exactly OEM, but it will do the job for now. We'll do another test. Hopefully you can hear that. So if we just push it back in there now. Still working. That should just push home. Still working. Okay, moment of truth. Please work. There we go. Yay. Happy days. Right, I want to show you another trick if I can. Now, you've got three keys. Can you see my keys? Three buttons on the keys lock, unlock, and a spare one. Now the factory key would say Lamb Rover on there. This has been a replacement key. You've seen that. If you haven't seen that video, go back and check my previous videos. But this one here, you can program to do a number of things. So you can put the um, uh, walking home lights on, so you can turn the lights on when you pull up onto your driveway, raise your suspension, um, something else. But apparently you can sync it to open the tailgate. So instead of pressing you know, the two buttons, the lock and the unlock, Instead of pressing those two on the dash, you can do the same thing apparently with that button. Now to sync it, you're supposed to press and hold that down, and then press that, and you're supposed to hear an audible beep from inside. So, so at the moment, if I press that, it does nothing, but that'll be switching my lights on and off, around the front. So if I press and hold that now, and then press and hold this, <laughs> Let's see. Oh, I thought I heard the beep. Oh, did you? Oh, I didn't hear it from here. Let's try. Did you hear that? Oh. How good's that? So if I press it, I'll do it from here. Let. So you, no, I'm not pressing the button. Press and hold. Happy days. So there we go. Right, I'm going to relieve my wife of her film of duties. Thank you, my darling. No problem. I love you. Thank you. And there we have it. So if it ever goes again, that's it. I'm going to shut my front door. Make sure it's all unlocked. Which it is. Yeah, so if that ever goes again, it means that I can use the remote to be at the back of the car, press and hold that down and open the tailgate without the need for sticking a wedge in, going to the front and all that sort of jazz. Now you can only program it when that button is working. I try programming it off the, the lock and the unlock button on the dashboard, but that doesn't work. It's got to be with the button out here. So there we go. A relatively straightforward fix. And forgive me, I am not an electrician. I don't do soldering for a living, as you can probably see. 
but it should be good enough to uh, do the repair that I've got there. They do do quite new to the market of those, like the um, crimping things I tried, the, the red crimp terminals. They do those filled with solder. Apparently, you can do put the, the cables in, do it with a heat gun. I might try a few of them, get some there uh, down here and give them a try. Um, but anyway, they're all soldered on, it's taped up, it should be good for a while. So there we have it, just a relatively short video from me, showing one of the repairs on my Land Rover. Um, how long have we had it now? November, December, January, February, three months? Three and a bit months? And I'm happy to report so far, everything's all okay. There's a couple of things that don't work on the car um, and haven't really worked since I've had them and that's the reversing sensors. So that'll be a video to come soon. I've bought four new reversing sensors. I've had the scanner on there and apparently all four have got uh, an issue. <coughs> Excuse me, and I've had the ignition on. I've put my ear to it to listen. None of them are working at all. So I've bought four replacements just in case. It's probably unplugged behind the bumper somewhere. You'll get to see some of my soldering skills if that's the case again. <laughs> um, but, and the heated seat on the driver's seat doesn't work hasn't worked since I've had it but other than that it's been absolutely good as gold so um, yeah really really pleased with it but anyway yeah just a short video to fix my tailgate ticked off the list um, watch out because we're going to be down on the XKR tomorrow evening um, so I've got I've finally got a day off tomorrow I'm working nights again tonight but I've got a day off tomorrow so I'm down there and we're gonna get quite a bit done tomorrow and get all the wheels off get up on its axle stands maybe get the seats out and the carpets up we'll see how far we go but check that video soon hopefully over the next day or two i'll get that uploaded but for now from me simon the products in the barn and my lovely wife for helping me out with the filming thanks darling we'll see you next time on projects in the barn take care everybody we'll see you soon from all of us here bye for now